A La Nina is building for the upcoming fall season as well as the transition going into at least the first half of winter. So let's take you back of where we stand for summer so far all the way back into June. This is the overall average mean temperature anomalies for June 1st through June 30th. Here we see a 1.75 degrees above average temperatures as we've been lying in that Enzo neutral phase. Most of the California coast has been actually below average, but once you got into the interior regions across the Pacific Northwest, most of California, Nevada, in the Four Corners regions, it wasn't really until the middle part of the country where you saw some just overall kind of average, milder type conditions. And then once you swung onto the Ohio Valley, getting into the Tennessee Valley, back into the Mid Atlantic, as well as in the Northeast, you definitely saw slightly above average conditions and as we flip the calendar in the month of july that cool spell just went inward into areas of california you stayed warmer than average across the pacific northwest but again the middle part of the country was the cooler side of the lower 48 and especially down there for new mexico and texas where they actually saw a lot of rain in the month of july but it wasn't again until you swung to the east where they predominantly were favored above average conditions and now we're in the month of august right so the last month of summer and yes we definitely see the pacific northwest continue to be slightly above average most of the four corners the desert southwest continue to remain hot and dry for them we we started kind of coming out of you know the average areas of across the middle part of the country but we also saw a lot of rain across the eastern seaboard and that's why you ended up being below average across the east so if we expand the view and take a look at the overall sea surface temperature anomalies and kind of where we stand here's where we stand i mean you can see all the darker blues that is definitely an indicative of cooler water starting to build there into the equatorial pacific and you can definitely see the transition right here you know zero degrees celsius that is more or less that enzo neutral phase is where we are currently right now but you can definitely see that trend is favoring on the cooler side and right now we're negative 0.8 Celsius, and that's already almost La Nina type criteria. I think we won't officially get there into the month of October, but we probably won't be staying there very long. We could see a transition back to Enzo neutral as we head into that second half of winter, because here's the latest update from the climate uh, you know climate uh, prediction center you can definitely see the transition right you can cooler waters in the equatorial pacific there you see the blue as the la nina building up here into september october likely november but once we transition into december and especially heading into january we're probably going to be seeing the second half of winter likely trying to transfer back into an enzo neutral phase which is currently where we are actually right now so what does all this mean so in a typical like la nina type setup we're starting to you, you start to favor and i don't think this actually more or less starts until the month of october you get a, a, a lot less active subtropical jet stream so and then you start to look at more of the polar jet stream to the north starting to become a little bit more active you get a little bit more northwest flow phases um, and then you get these colder pushes of air coming in from the north you start to get wetter light conditions across the pacific northwest and then across the south you start to tend to favor a more drier overall setup with a lot less active uh, subtropical jet stream and for those areas across the ohio valley you tend to see above average rainy conditions but going into the second half of winter i think that's when we'll kind of transition back into that enzo neutral phase and basically what that means is we'll likely see the polar jet stream getting a little bit more pronounced right so we'll start to see the northwest flow getting setups more areas of colder pushes of air coming in from the north and we'll start to have a, a likely colder second half 
of winter ahead with those areas across the south being overall on average above normal conditions as far as temperatures go and then the wet season starts to come back at least the second half and it could be ending up to a snowy second half of winter for those areas across the ohio valley and getting into the northeast so here's the drought conditions where we stand right now and there yes you're kind of begging for rain up there in the pacific Northwest, you're kind of high and dry. It's been dry for the last couple of months. It's definitely been dry across the across the Four Corners regions in the desert southwest. We've had some pr pretty good rains across the middle part of the country. Being in that end zone neutral, we have been seeing some overall average conditions. But there definitely are pockets of drought, subtle drought conditions across areas of New England and here back into Missouri as well as into Arkansas going into the fall months so we are going into a little bit of a cooler spell um, if you will with some little colder shots of air so it's a nice way to end the month of august and heading into areas of september we should see some below average conditions for the central and eastern two-thirds of the u.s while much of the pacific northwest continues to remain on the hotter side and also with you know the mjo phases starting to come back especially after we hit after labor day you start to get a little bit more favorable phases start begin a little bit more upward rising motion air and again i don't think we're in that enzo neutral uh into the la nina criteria until the month of october so i am expecting at least across the south to be an overall wetter month in the month of September for areas of Texas and Oklahoma, those areas in Arkansas where they definitely desperately need the rain and areas across the Southeast as well. I think you're still overall dry for the Pacific Northwest and overall drier conditions for those areas across the Ohio Valley into the Mid-Atlantic. But there's the upward rising motion air. So you've got a little bit of a lull. We've had a lot of say fish storms lately and we're gonna we go after labor day we're gonna go into a little bit more favorable phase of what's known as the mjo all that basically means is is the green areas you start to see a little bit more upward rising motion air so we're obviously going into the peak of hurricane season so i do feel things are going to be ramping up fairly quickly once we transition you know away from uh, labor day and start to getting into deeper in the middle to the uh, second half of the month of september i think things are really starting to light up to end the hurricane season heading into october and it could last even into first couple of weeks of november this year but what's going to be pressing is the arctic oscillation so once we transfer into the into the fall months that polar jet is going to be a little bit more noticeable and going to be a little bit more pronounced so yes this arctic oscillation is going to continue to remain on the negative side all this really means is you're going to have a, a, a pressing push of colder air trying to pulse down from the north at times and that's that active polar jet and you're going to you're going to see the transition as we head into the month of October with the I think the La Nina starting to take over it's going to start looking a lot more like La Nina so we're going to be seeing you know above average conditions for a good part of the pacific northwest and much of the desert southwest i really don't see that changing terribly too much we're going to have the you know the northwest flow so you do you get cooler shots of air from time to time that will impact i think that we're going to be very active on the severe weather front as well across the good part the middle part in southern plains as well and then also across the ohio valley as uh, active as well and once we transition into november yes we're going to be really deep into that weak la nina by then with areas across you know much of the west and the desert southwest continue to favor that la nina type look and but also the polar jet starting to get a little bit more pronounced as well with more cold, you know, cooler and colder shots of air coming down at times. And that will likely impact those areas in, in the month of November. And then as we transition into December, 
again, we're going to be seeing a less favorable subtropical jet. So this is going to be, you know, less favorable. So it's going to be dr overall drier across the south and wetter across the north in simplified terms and a little bit colder with especially that Arctic Oscillation continued to remain on the negative side. So you'll start to see that cold, colder dome of air start to push further south as we transition into December. And I think that just gets a little bit more pronounced in January, especially as we likely flip back into that Enzo neutral phase into the second half of winter. We're definitely going to be seeing a little bit more active polar jet starting to take over more deep colder intrusions of air starting to take over it's not like you're not going to get cold at times across the south but it's likely not going to stick around for you know a longer periods of time so overall i do feel you'll still end on the above average side even though you're still going to get some of those arctic pulses of air at, at times and there's february right i think february is again overall colder than normal across the north with the more active polar jet you'll still get the deep intrusions of colder air across the south but again that's not going to last too long so overall you'll you'll see a, a likely likely uh, you know the month of february will be the coldest month of winter i feel and but you'll still have those colder shots of air coming in at times. So I'll be doing a overall winter forecast in a couple of weeks. So I just wanted to fine tune the details on this update, making that transition out of Enzo neutral into a weak La Nina phase, and then possibly back to an Enzo neutral going into that second week, second half of winter. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Appreciate you watching. Definitely hit the subscribe button and catch the next update. Why I protect you before and after the storm.